Well, hello listeners. Welcome to episode number 15, I believe this is. And I hope that you guys are having a good writing week. I have been having a pretty good one myself. I did not finish my book last week. Surprise! Um, But I did remember that that's my process, is that I always get to a certain point in the book and I have no idea how to fix the mess that I've gotten these people into and I panic and I have a few days of flailing on the page and then it, I remember, this is the way I do it. I write my endings after I revise the whole book. You would think that 16 books in, I would know that. Uh, Apparently I didn't. It comes as a surprise every time. So I got to a good stopping point and I have started revision, started yesterday and um, I aim on good days for about 10,000 words revised. That's not perfectly clean. The sentences aren't at the lyrical stage yet. Um, They're just thought out, cleaned up, put in order. At this point of a revision, I'm looking mostly at plot and how things fit. That's the most important part. So um, that has been fun. You know, I love revision and this is no exception. I did start something cool this week that you should know about and um, you should join. I am going to be sending a weekly newsletter providing writing encouragement every week. Uh, It's going to be short and sweet, kind of like these podcasts. It's something I wished I had had, lo these many writing years. Um, Basically, I'm going to use this podcast. This is full disclosure. I'm going to use this podcast to kind of jumpstart that newsletter. I'm going to springboard off of something one of my guests say about those craft tips and just kind of talk about it, give you a little push in the right direction to get your work done. So I really wish that you would sign up for it totally free, no strings attached, unsubscribe at any time. Just go to rachelheron.com forward slash write, R-A-C-H-A-E-L-H-E-R-R-O-N.com forward slash write. W-R-I-T-E, the normal way to spell right. You know how to spell right. Um, So you should come sign up. It's free. It's fun. It's going to be good. And now let's hop into this episode's interview. Uh, This is with Dana Kay. Her new book just came out, and I'm 100% serious about this. You should go get it. If you're a writer who is interested in promotion at any level of the game, go get her book. I met Dana because I needed a good publicist. And I understood from everyone that she was the best. And she absolutely is. I've worked with her on two campaigns. Um, She knows what the hell she is doing. And she is literally the best in the industry. And she has dumped out her brain into this book on publicity and marketing. So um, you should go get it. Enjoy this interview. She is just a delight. And I wish you a very happy writing week. All right. Well, welcome listeners. I am so pleased right now to be here with my friend, Dana Kay. Let me give you a little introduction, but first, hi, Dana. How are you? I'm well. How are you doing? I'm so good. I'm so glad to talk to you. Dana's book comes out this week, which is why I wanted her on the show this week. Dana Kay received her BA in fiction writing from Columbia College, Chicago. And after college, she worked as a freelance writer and book critic. And this experience has been crucial to her publicity career. She is known for her innovative ideas and knowledge of current trends. And she frequently speaks on the topics of social media, branding, and publishing trends. And her commentary has been featured on websites like the Huffington Post, Little Pink Book, and NBC Chicago. And most excitingly to me uh, Mm -hmm. right now, this week, she is the author of Your Book, Your Brand, a step-by-step guide to launching your book and boosting sales, available now from Diversion Books. So congratulations on your book. Thank you. Oh my gosh. And listeners, I know Dana because I hired her years ago as so we just had a strictly working relationship but now we're friends and I really do believe not blowing smoke that you (laughs) are the best publicist in the book industry and the fact that you have a book out now kind of like telling some of your secrets is truly amazing yeah it was a really I'm really excited about it and I think that it was nice to take all of the knowledge that I've accrued over the years and kind of download it into a book that I that 
authors around the country can read. And I think that it's, I can't reach everybody. I can't work with every author. You know, not every author has the budget. Not every author, it's the right fit for us. You don't have the time. Right. (laughs) And so it's it's a really good resource that every author, no matter what your budget, they can get all the tools they need to successfully launch their book. I'm going to go off script of questions a little bit because I'm curious. um, You have a fiction writing background. I do. So now when you were in the publicity field. You've been in that for a number of years now. Did you miss that writing? And how did this writing feel when you were doing it? So I had, when I first started my company, I was still writing fiction kind of on the side. Um, There's a lot of great live lit events in Chicago that I would be invited to read at. And so I was continuing, continuing it there. And there was a point where I realized that if I wanted to do this right and really launch my company, I needed to devote 100% of my energy into that. I didn't have time for a side hustle. Right, um, and right. so I, I took a step back and I thought about, okay, if I found out I was going to die tomorrow, what would I be the most disappointed about? Would it be not publishing a novel or would it be not giving me my company the chance to grow and thrive? And it was the latter. So I I gave up writing fiction um, and I didn't really miss it, honestly, because I do so much blogging. We write press releases. We write pitch emails. It's all storytelling. We have authors that we need to convey their message and their story to the media. And so I got a lot of my fix that way. Mm. And And you're also digesting a lot of, I mean, you only take clients, I know this from experience, whose books you have read and love. You don't, yes. so you're, so you're getting a lot into words anyway. Right. I'm reading constantly. Um, and it, it's, I mean, it's definitely good. I, I will be frank and say that reading has become work. It's oh, part God. of my job. And God. so I try to take some time, definitely over the holidays. I usually take a couple weeks over summer where I'm just reading for pleasure, not for clients. Uh, but I think that I'm still involved in the fiction process. It's just wearing a different hat. I think a lot of editors and agents also have a writing background Mm because I think everyone goes in thinking they're going to be a writer, but there are a lot of other ways to be involved in the publishing process. Yeah. Yeah. My agent always calls that when she goes on vacation with real books, she calls them, she just wants to read books with covers. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Or that don't have notes or and not on a screen. Um, we get yeah. a lot of page proofs in PDF format. Uh, it's fine. The iPad is a great, a great tool, but I stare at screens all day and I want to crack nice. a spine and <laughs> turn the paper, hear it moving, pick it up, buy it yourself at a, at a store. <laughs> so what did you find when you were actually writing the book? What was the best time of day that you found to write? And where did you end up doing most of the writing? So it was interesting because I have a young son and I don't, and a full-time job. Um, so I didn't have much flexibility <laughs> in when I wrote. Um, I wrote every single night um, after he went to bed and over the, during the weekends I wrote during his naps. Okay. And I, I really wanted to not sacrifice time with him. Yeah. Um, I think that he was younger, so the benefit is he went to bed earlier. He was taking two naps a day. If I didn't make my word count in the first two naps or the first nap, I can have the second nap as a backup. Yeah. Uh, so I was really, I felt really lucky and very blessed that I was able to write and not sacrifice. I definitely sacrificed um, my health. I did not eat that well, nor mm. did I exercise. Um, mm-hmm. But I was able to. I was writing a lot of words. The turnaround time for this book was very short. So I was writing about 3,000 words a day. Oh, you're kidding. Yes. Um, I wrote it in about, the draft was about seven weeks. Oh, I write 3,000 words a day and that is my job. That is your job. And I don't have kids. But it's fiction. It's different. It's a little different. Um, You have to, I already knew, I had a very clear outline of what the chapter structure is, what was going into each chapter. So you were really filling in a lot of stuff that you had already thought about. Right. It was more about downloading all of my, all of the things I do every day um, and just downloading it onto the page. I had already done a lot of the the craft aspect really went into the outline and the outline took, I would say a few weeks and a little massaging um, to figure out the best structure. And of course that structure changes. I would be writing about something like, oh, this goes in this section, not in this section. Um, 
And so, yeah, it was a lot of work. It was very intense. I was very tired, uh, but I was very, I felt very lucky that I could do that. I could do that and get it done. I have, um, I, I use Scrivener um, and that's the go-to program. And for those of you who are familiar with Scrivener, it has the, the word count and how close you are. And if I was running out of time, if he was like starting to stir and I saw that my Scrivener thing was still like in the orange and not in the green, <laughs> I would start panicking. Um, and so, uh, so that was definitely a, motiv- a motivating tool. Um, I'm also a, a runner and a swimmer and a triathlete. So I'm very like goal oriented and milestones and training oriented. So the, the word count goal every day and that progress bar really helped keep me motivated um, to get my word count down in a very swift amount of time. I only learned about that that word count tool thing in Scrivener. I guess I knew it was there, but I'd never tried it until this last mm-hmm. book. It is really cool. It really it, does motivate you. It's a, it's the gamification thing. Yes. And yes. it's all very motivated. I think that's why NaNoWriMo yeah. does so well and so many people want to participate is because it's a set amount of time, set word count, and it's just everyone's pushing you to go, 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 and you upload your word count to their website and you see not just where you are in progress, but where your friends are. Exactly. I mean, I have a Fitbit and my friends <laughs> challenge me <laughs> And I have definitely run in my living room watching TV because I wanted to make that 10,000 step goal. Uh, And so whatever, I think whatever drives you and motivates you. So I think that Scrivener really helped, um, really helped in that regard. It also has a good, I don't know if you see Rachel, that they have a, the tracker so you can see how your word count is from section to section. So it also. Oh, I haven't looked at that. Yeah. It keeps me on track to make sure that there wasn't like the social media section wasn't, you know. 50 pages while the publicity section was only 20 and oh. make sure some consistency. And I think for fiction writers, if you have different characters, you know, sub characters may get shorter chapters while your primary character gets longer chapters and identifying those patterns. I could see it as being really helpful. I'm going to check that out. I had no idea it did that. I'm, I'm one of those Scrivener people. I use it the bare minimum. And every once in a while I'll like learn new tricks, but I didn't go into Scrivener. I didn't learn everything at once because I knew it was overwhelming. So I'm just kind of, you know, but I've been using it for 10 years. I still don't know this stuff. There is a, um, I think it's still a free webinar. Um, it called app sumo. It's offered by app sumo that they do occasionally free webinars about Scrivener. And so I had taken one of those and that was really helpful to learn the basics. You definitely don't know all the tips and tricks. And I would argue that, if you're learning all the tips and tricks, you're probably not writing exactly. like you should be. And so yeah. I think that it's, but that was a really helpful thing of like identifying what are the tools that I need to best complete this book. That is awesome. What is the worst writing advice you've ever been given? You know, I get a lot of advice. Everyone has an <laughs> opinion. Um, you know, I think that there was, a, in, especially in creative writing communities, I think that there is a lot of, emphasis on show don't tell. I think we've all heard that before. And I think it can be really misleading. I think that there's some things that you don't need to show how she moved or how her hair was or how uh, a character yeah, moves throughout the world. You can just say she paced back and forth in her office and you can just tell that. Um, and I think that there's a lot of times where it is important to show and demonstrate and uh, really create a picture for the writer but there, or for the reader, but there's also a lot of times where, you know what, you should just tell it plain. If it's not adding to the action or adding to the forward momentum, then you don't need to beef it up. You can just say, she paced, she said. I love oh, that. You know, I love so. that. And, and it is a fear that is so ingrained in us after a while because I'm, I'm constantly scanning my work. Going, am, I, am I telling? Am I telling too much? But yeah, sometimes you just But sometimes, tell. yeah, you can show if it's, Again, if it's adding, if it's adding to your message, if it's adding to the scene, if it's forwarding the action, but if it's just taking up space, like a reader wants to get on with it. I had an argument about, I think it was with another writer who was saying like, oh, well, in women's fiction or in literary fiction, you don't have to have that page turning suspense. And I'm like, but you do. Yeah. You need to keep those pages turning. You need your job. And this goes for, for me or for any author, your job is to get that reader to turn the page, get to an end of the chapter and just say, you know what, just one more, just one more chapter. 
and keep them moving through the book. Because if they put it down, there's a chance they're not going to pick it back up again. I'm reading this um, book on writing that Kat Rambo suggested to me on an earlier podcast called The 10% Solution. And it is... I love that. I love that. Do you you like that book? I haven't read the book, but she did a... I believe she did an article for... She might have been like Writer's Digest or her she blog. She loves it. And she might have, because it's hard, it was hard to get the book. Um, but, and it's just this tiny little book, but he is pulling me through it. Like I keep going, okay, just a little bit more. Just a little, I just right. want to read a little bit more. And mm-hmm. the tension is there, mm-hmm. you know, even in nonfiction. So Yes, absolutely. Oh, that's, that's really because cool. you want to think that, okay, there's one more thing, you know, you there's one more thing I could learn or, yeah. oh, it's really interesting. I want to just read a little bit more. Right. And you should keep the momentum going. You don't want anyone to, you don't want anyone to doze off. You don't want anyone to, you want readers to feel like every single word in this book has some purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't want them to use it for their late night. Like I had insomnia last night and I have a book on my Kindle that I use for insomnia. (laughs) I'm never going to finish it because I can never get to the end of two or three pages. You don't want to be that book. (laughs) Yeah. There was one book. It won a Pulitzer. (laughs) Which says something. And that was your book? That That was my insomnia. (laughs) That was my insomnia book. Well, I have trouble, I have trouble reading at night. I can't read at night. Um, I, sometimes I have to, but again, if I read at night, if it's a good book, it's way too stimulating and I just am up. Um, and then I have to read my insomnia book to go to bed. Um, or if it's not good, then I, I fall asleep. And so I can't, so either way, I don't want to read at night, but so I can either read and then have to put down the good book and read the insomnia book. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. We never want to be the insomnia book. <laughs> you don't want to be the insomnia book. That's my writing advice. Don't be the insomnia book. I love, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> what secret writing tip of awesomeness have you discovered the hard way? Oh, hard way. I think that, you know, it's, it's so different for fiction and nonfiction. Um, I, I remember when I was writing fiction, not getting too caught up in your outline or not getting too caught up in what you had planned and letting your characters follow their own journey sometimes into a hole that you have to dig them (laughs) out of. Um, And with nonfiction, I think what surprised me was that finding the right balance between not talking down to your reader, but also not assuming that they know what you know. So I had a few different beta readers read chapters and say, like, do you know what this is? Mm -hmm. Like, I I referred to traditional publicity and a a non-publishing person was like, well, what does that entail? And I didn't even think of, I I would have to define that. But then there's other things that I was maybe defining at length. Like I have in the book, there's a social media section and I was very careful about you know, most people know what Twitter is. They know what Facebook is, but they may not understand all the lingo. They may not understand all of the tips and tricks and best practices. Mm -hmm. So I was careful to include definitions of everything, but also keep it short. I think that that was a, that was something surprising because when you're writing fiction, everyone comes along with you and I hope. And so with fiction, with nonfiction, there was a lot of defining and creating expectations for the reader and making sure that they were learning something new, but also they're not being left in the dark. That is awesome. That is really, really Mm -hmm. cool. How do you refill the creative well? Do you you even have time to do that? (laughs) I (laughs) will see. I'm going to be starting the next book soon and it's going to be another crazy like deadline. I think I'm going to use November as good non-fiction writing month it's it's um, nano rebel it's absolutely, <laughs> absolutely done it there's there's sections on their website for that what is that really? book on um i as of right now um it's going to be about content marketing oh which right. is how writers can use the content they create and leverage their platform and earn new readers so i address it slightly in my book the, this the your book your brand was all giving writers all of the tools they could possibly use to promote their book and letting them decide which ones work best for them and which ones they should delve more deeply into. And the content marketing aspect, I think, has enough meat on it that warrants its own its own book. Because I think that you guys are authors, you know how to write. So why don't you use the thing you're good at and use that to leverage your publicity? Like not everyone is great at social media. Not everyone is great at pitching, pitching media, right. uh, but 
everyone, you guys all know how to write. So it's right. about taking what you wrote in your novel and using it to create other pieces of content that could potentially garner a new audience. Um, and so that I have the outline. It's with my publisher. I'm waiting to hear back their thoughts from the, the editorial board. Um, and if it's a go, uh, then yeah, I'm going to hit the ground running. Well, if you ever need a beta reader for that, because I'm super Thank fascinated you. in content marketing. I would, too. Lo- I would love that. <laughs> I would love that, Rachel. Thank you. Um, but, but, um, so when you do have those few minutes, what do you mm-hmm. do to like refill your soul or do you, I mean, <laughs> I honestly, I mean, you have a full-time job, the, the kid who's now a kid, not a baby mm-hmm. and writing and yeah. family. I think that it's about taking some time tuning out. Um, I think that, like I said, I don't necessarily have the luxury to go on long walks and beckon the muse and do all those <laughs> things. Um, I do know that working out helps if I'm not physically active, I start to get really, really cranky. Yeah. Um, so even if I'm not working out for a, a real workout, um, just get walking somewhere or doing riding my bike on an errand or something um, will help. And I think honestly, sitting, comp- I compartmentalize fairly well. Um, obviously, as a PR person, it's easy to, and a small business owner, it's easy to get consumed by like every hour of your day spent working. Um, so I compartmentalize fairly well. Like okay, when I leave the office, I'm at home now. This is where my focus is. And I think that's what helps with writing is that I had a dining room table, um, not an office, um, sitting at the dining room table in the same place every single night and putting on my headphones. Um, I listen to musical scores a lot. Mm-hmm. And they, and th- I think that routine is what helps me channel like, okay, you are in creative mode. Um, you're not in work mode anymore. And I think that that's what regener- That's I think what rejuvenates rejuvenates me is that I can turn off the rest of my life and focus and focus here. Um, but I again, I also every day I'm working with talented authors. I'm working on really great books. I'm practicing the things that I was do, I was trying to express in my book. So I think that always I was always taking notes of you know if there's a new marketing tactic that I thought would be interesting, um, I would always write that down like oh I should research that maybe it'll make it into the book and. I think all authors do that, though. That's so. what I. That's what I love about talking to you, though, is that you are genuinely so excited about everything that you are doing, which leads me to my <laughs> next question on really bad days. If you could, if you had to choose another profession that, let's say, is not writing and is mm-hmm. not publicity, what would you choose? So this is kind of, I guess it is it is kind of writing. So it's a little bit of a cheat. Um, but I a few years ago. Uh, took a stand-up comedy class. Oh my gosh! And that I sounds really like hell to me. It. Why? Oh, I don't know. I'm just I'm so terrified by that whole stand-up thing. I get scared in the audience. I don't. Know. <laughs> I'm so serious. You know, I'm not afraid to. I, I I'm not that afraid to fail. I guess that's the thing. Is like yeah. if I got up there and there was and I told the joke and there was crickets, <laughs> I wouldn't. I would die. I would just be like, ah, that didn't work. Let's try something else. Um, but you know, it's the same reason. I mean, it's the same mindset that helped me launch my company. Like yeah. the thought of launching, if you own your own business, you have to, you can't be afraid to fail. Yeah. Um, and so, so I think that would be it, but it is writing ultimately. That's what I learned oh, is yeah. that it's not just telling jokes in a bar. It's really writing and revising. And the class was really informative about revision, um, which I helped, I think helped also in my, in the book, but you know, you write a joke and you think about what worked, what didn't, how you can make it better, how you revise something to a three minute set versus a five minute set. Um, and so I would really, and so I did a couple, I've done quite a few open mics and I think it's really, it's really fun. Um, so if I could do that full time, I think I'd be happy. Although the schedule I would die because it's all late at night and I'm a morning person. Um, I had an interview last night at nine o'clock at night and I had to drink like two shots of espresso <laughs> to, to stay up. <laughs> and I got home at 1030 and it felt like the wee hours of the morning. <laughs> so I don't think I would have to have like a daytime, a daytime comedy show that people can come on their lunch hour or something. You could be the next Ellen. Let's, let's do it. Could oh that would be so much fun. Wouldn't we well, all want to be the next yes, Ellen? Of course. Um, oh you've, that's the first time that com- comedy's ever sounded attractive to me. I'd never thought about it as writing. But when it you is. say that, 
maybe I'll, maybe I'll, because I also, you know me, I love to do things that scare me. So if yeah. it really scares me, I'll probably end up doing something like it at some point. I'm sure there's something. So I took a class um, at it's the Lincoln Lodge in Chicago and there, they have a stand up seminary and I'm sure there's something in the Bay area that you could take. And it was just like a six week class. It was very, wor- it felt like, a, you know, it felt like, I guess this is cheating because it did feel like being back in the writing workshop yeah. and because everyone t- does their, they does, they do their bit. Everyone talks about what worked, oh, what didn't work, how you can amplify. Um, and also the idea of how to come up with a joke and how to find the meat of your joke, because we would do these things called um, premise webs, where you come up with a premise and then you spew out from there, like possibilities. So like my premise at the time, which mm. is funny, um, was that I don't have kids, I have a dog. <laughs> and so Look all the things now. come out. Oh, I had to toss out my entire, all my material when I had a kid. It was so frustrating because all of a sudden I did, I, I was like, oh, maybe I'll go to one open mic and just do it even though I have a kid. But I, I didn't feel authentic. I don't think, yeah. That... No, no, you would appreciate it. I'll send you a link. Um, but they, uh, so yeah, that whole idea of writing, of like coming up with like, here's your premise, coming out of possibilities from there and then identifying what's the most important and what works the best. And in terms of fiction, you have an idea for a character or a concept or a premise, and it can go in a yeah. hundred different ways. Um, so identifying what's the thing that's going to stick, like what's actually going to be the meat of that joke. I can, I can imagine that that would just strengthen a writer. Like I really believe that people who love Twitter are strengthened by loving Twitter because we do I get used so. to taking out every unnecessary word to put all the strength into one sentence. And understanding audience and understanding tone. I think yeah. people who are really good at social media have a really good sense of audience because the people who are on Facebook are not the same people that are on Twitter exactly. or not the same people on Tumblr. Yeah. So understanding your audience, it, it helps you as a writer. I feel like you've already given us so many craft tips. <laughs> have you got any extra one that you put aside for me or did I already like run through them all? For craft, I think that... Oh, obviously revision is important. I think that, um, do you you enjoy revision? (sighs) So (laughs) I, yes, I enjoy when things get better. How about that? But, (laughs) um, I, I have a tendency not to be able to see the forest for the trees. I think that I, I, I spend a lot of time drafting and I kind of tweak as I go. And if I do something down here that I realize, Oh, I should probably fix that over here. I'll, I'll kind of do that as I go. Mm. Uh, but at the end, I, once I have that full draft, I need someone else to tell me what's missing. And then once it's, once they identify the problem, I'm very quick to solve. Like I can solve it. If, even if it's my, my wife is my first beta reader and she's the harshest cricket critic ever. <laughs> and she will just say, this is bad, make it better. <laughs> and like, you know, and most authors are like, Oh, that's what, but that I'm like, Oh, I see why that's so helpful. I can identify, this is bad. Yes. I can make it better. I need someone to tell me that something is bad or something right. is not working and then I can make it better. I don't need, I don't need the solution to the problem. So I, I I'm not a good revisor in the sense that I can't, I have a hard time self editing. Um, especially if it's like really soon. Um, right. like if I draft, I'd probably need a month to order in order to self edit. But if someone tells me what the problems are, I can easily solve it. And I, I'm not daunted by if someone says, Hey, you have to throw out 10,000 words and make them better. That's, I can do that. I love doing that. I love filling the trash can. I, <laughs> I honestly do. That's like a thrill to me. I'm starting revision on a book today as soon as we get off the, the phone. So um, I can't I can't wait to hit it and start slashing and burning. Fill your darling. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Well, Dana Kay's book is your book, your brand, a step-by-step guide to launching your book and boosting sales. Available everywhere. Order it from your local bookstore, from Amazon. And where can listeners find you, Dana? So I am quite a few places. I am on all social media. Um, so the company page is kpublicity.com, K-A-Y-E. I also have my personal speaking page at Dana K, K-A-Y-E, speaks.com. And in, on October 1st, we're launching a Your Book, Your Brand online course. Ooh. So for those of you who like online courses, because I love them, I, I take a zillion of them. Me too. Uh, they, that's going to open to the public essentially on October 1st. And that's kpublicity.teachable.com. Okay. I also like Teachable very much. I have a class on there. Um, I love, I like their platform. I've taken it's attractive. six or seven classes on there that I really, really enjoyed. Do you have any kind of a mailing list or newsletter that you send out that people can sign up for? 
I do. Okay. And you can sign up at the website. So my mailing list is at bit.do slash kpublicity. Perfect. Okay, because I know that people will want to sign up for that. Yeah. And thank you so much. I am so thank excited you for about having your book. Me. Yay. All right. Well, best of luck with everything. And I will talk to you really soon. Thanks, Rachel. You too. You bet. Bye. <laughs> Bye.